My name is Michelle Sound, and I am the Aboriginal Program Assistant here at Emily Carr. I am Cree and Métis. My mother's reserve is from the Canuso area of Alberta, Slave Lake. And I was born and raised in Vancouver, and I first learned how to make drums when I was a student here at Emily Carr. I am a graduate of the master's program here. And Brenda Crabtree, the Aboriginal program manager, um, had workshops where people learned how to make drums. So the technique that I've learned is from her, and it's something that I've been experimenting with in my own art practice. I have been making um, drums, um, elk hide, deer hide, and goat hide drums. And what I've been experimenting with is using dyes and then painting designs on top of them. And so the techniques I'll be showing today are how I was taught by Brenda. And so we have some different kind of drums here. This one, this large drum that I have is an elk hide drum. And this one here is a deer hide drum. So the deer hide is a lot thinner and is pretty easy to work with. So what we start off with is, of course, our deer hide. We like to use as much of the material as possible. So we cut these, we cut off all the edging around here. And we can use this part inside here, and that can be used for the drum circle. Um, we also cut off all the edging, and then we cut around the whole entire shape that we have here, and we use it for the stringing. We use chemically um, processed hides. We do not scrape or treat our own hides. So we buy them commercially um, made. And what we do is we soak them overnight. I have an elk hide here. We soak them overnight, give them time to soften up. And then you have to spend about half an hour wringing out your hide, wringing out the water and softening it up so that it will be OK to stretch over the frame. So we have our hide and we put it down with the rough side up. We also have our stringing and this, this we have used deer hide and we cut it into a long strip, usually about three to four arm lengths so that we have enough stringing for our drum. And then what we do is we just pull on it just pull it away from yourself. You don't want to pull it too hard, it can rip, but what we're doing this for is to lengthen it and also to thin out the, the stringing so that it can fit through the holes of the drum once we get to that part. So we just go like this, do it about two or three times and just pull this and then it will be okay for stringing. What we do next is we use, what we use is a leather punch um, that you can get from Tandy's or leather supply stores and they're really convenient to use. And what we do is we just hold it as far as it can go um, around the edge of the hide and just punch through. And you do it about, do it about four inches or how we tell people to, um, to think of it, or if we don't all have rulers with us, is about the length of a credit card. So just go around the whole entire edge of your elk hide and just punch, punch through the whole thing. We also use wooden awls. So these um, are really great tools. You just push them through through the hide again because sometimes they are quite thick and it will make the hole a little bit bigger for when you're putting the stringing through it. You just push these through. I put the, push them through this way because your stringing is going to come through the hole this way and that way the hole just, it'll just make it a little bit easier to go through and then you just go through the whole entire length. We 
We use circles for the stringing so that it looks like this. We have an inner circle. And so we've soaked the hide for that as well. And I'm just going to fold that in half and just use the scissors to cut out a circle. And then we have our elk hide ring. And what we do is we grab the other one that we've already cut and we put, there's a rough side and a soft side to both the hides. So we take our rough side and we put them together, rough side to rough side. And then what we do is we just center it onto our hide as much as we can. And then that will be ready for putting our frame and our, doing our stringing of our drum. So then we just center this onto our hide as much as we can. Just make sure that our hide's going to go all the way around. Play around with that a little bit. And then we will be ready for stringing. When we're ready to pull our stringing through, what we do is we just grab our scissors and we just try to cut this on a bit of an angle so that we make a point and that will make it easier to pull through. So you just want to make sure that your stringing is not going to get all tangled up. Always leave a bit of a tail to go through the other half. You just do half at a time. That way it won't get tangled up. And it will be fine. So it's gone through the first hole. Then what you're going to do is gather this up and you're going to lift up your rings. You're always going to lift that up and then take your string and lift it underneath. It's always going to go under. Then this has gone through and you're going to take your string and you're going to go back through the other hole. It never goes over top. You're just always going back through. And you also don't want it to start to rip. Your, while you're working on it, your hide will start to get a little bit dry. So we always keep a spray bottle nearby just to soak it again. And just to make sure that our hide isn't, our stringing isn't gonna get dry and rip. And then underneath the circle, again, keeping it nice and loose. You're not gonna tighten it at all yet. We just wanna make sure we've got enough to go through the entire drum. And then on the other side, we're just gonna pull through. The first row that you go through is always the hardest. After that, you're just tightening it. It's really easy. Once we've gone through our stringing around the whole entire circle and our stringing has gone through every hole, what we're going to do is we are going to tighten it. We're going to go around and we're just going to make sure it's nice and tight so that this part of your drum will be nice and tight. Right now it's pretty loose, but when it dries, um, which we'll, we'll do overnight, sometimes it can take up to three days depending on the weather. So we just wanna make sure that it's nice and as tight and can be and that there are no, um, no dents in the middle here, that it's not, not soft. So we're gonna go around. And when we do our drums, we always recommend we, um, that you leave them in an open air space so that they're not in a bag or they're not in a cupboard or anything like that. They need um, the air circulation so that they won't smell because that what will happen, the, uh, the hide will start to rot. So you gotta make sure it's nice, has a nice place to, to dry out. So what I do is I take this part here, I, I have my two ends and I hold them really tight together and I hold it and then what I do is I go around the entire length of the string. It's just 
getting a bit of rhythm going. To tighten these all up, so just all the way around, pulling one through, holding onto it, and then tightening it. You have to be very careful when you're doing this because the holes that you've punched are still wet and they can rip. It's not a big deal if they do rip, we can, you just punch another hole beside it pretty much and then restring it, but you just, you don't wanna have to do that. It makes it a lot easier if you can just get it through. Tightening the entire length. And the hide will stretch a lot, like this one has stretched a lot and it's going right to the edges of the, the circle, which is fine. This one, the hole's getting pretty pretty tight. So you just pretty much, you feel around for the tension. The circle on the, is pretty tight here. So I don't think I need to go around again. And when you're going through, you're just gonna make sure as much as you can that the edges of your drum are as flat as you can get them. So you just gotta kinda play with it and wiggle around a little bit and get these as flat as you can. And keep your, your hide that's on the inside here. Just try to make that as straight as you can. It just dries nicer. And also some people like to paint the edges of their drum. It'll be the whole entire design. So you just wanna try to give that as, make it as nice and flat as you can. So this is nice and tight here. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna pull one of these underneath. And I do end up with a lot of stringing and I always worry when I first start that I'm not gonna have enough stringing to go the entire length. When you get near the last little bit before you start tightening, it always looks like you're not gonna have enough. But there usually is a lot left over and you've done your, your pulling of the stringing. So it's nice and thin, so there usually is enough to make a handle. So what we do is we just tie this off just in a simple tie like that. I always go underneath as well. Just to make sure it's nice and secure. Once your hide is dry, it will, it will dry in place. It's not going to move at all. And then what I do is I just take my, my string here and I just braid them together. You can do whatever you'd like for your handle. You can do one that's across, one that's straight across. It doesn't even have to be braided. It's totally up to you how you'd like to do it. It's just your artistic license and whatever kind of handle you'd like to make. I always like to do mine in the braided style. I just think it looks a little bit nicer. So I've gone the length of the inner circle. I'm gonna tie one underneath. So everybody will have their own different ways to do this. And then I'm just gonna tie this. Again. When I get to here, I put mine through so that it's just a little bit more secure. And then continue braiding. Until I get to the end here. And then I'm gonna pull this one through and I'm gonna just tie a knot. And then I always tie it underneath as well so that the cut part is not showing. So I'll tie that again underneath and then I'll just grab my scissors and I'll just cut from underneath here. Making sure I don't cut anything else. And that is it. Our drum is now finished and our braided handle is done and we will let that dry for about um, 
anywhere up to three days, depending on the weather. And it will be nice and dry, and it will have the nice, you know, you can use it for ceremony if you want to. It can be an art piece. It can be used as a canvas. Um, and it will just dry nice in place. 